Hello world and welcome back. I'm Karhu the Great Bear of the North and this is Venetia Universalis for some mods, some DLCs, you and me, everything's fantastic. At the tail end of the last episode, we got Zagreb, Slavonia, Srem, uh, Beograd, Smederevo, and Visoki, and you guys know what this means. Whoop! In episode 1 of this series, I spoke about Louis I of Hungary and his war against Venice to regain Dalmatia in 1358. Now, 120 years later, the reckoning has come due. With the loss of six of their southernmost provinces, almost everything south of the Danube, which will become a major theme of this episode, I doubt Hungary will recover. Moral of the story? Don't mess with Venice. The first stop on our Take That Hungary tour is Osijek, in the historical Slavonia region of Croatia. Osijek is a relatively minor settlement, especially by comparison to some of the other cities in this episode. The city was called Mursa in Roman times, and was the site of a few battles between would-be emperors. It rose again in the medieval era, only to be raised by the Ottomans in 1526, then to be rebuilt by them a half century later. Of note to our roleplay, Osijek is situated on the Drava River, only about 17 kilometers or 10 miles from the Danube. If I were Venice, and in a way I am, I'd build a new city there, any name suggestions, YouTube? Situated on the Zava River, Zagreb is the capital of modern-day Croatia. Unfortunately, it is also a city of little historical importance. I say unfortunately because the city is stunningly beautiful, and I wanted to share these wonderful images with you as I spoke about the city's glorious history. But in the time of Europa Universalis IV, Zagreb's population was little more than 4,000 people. It was, however, the seat of the Archbishop of Zagreb, and that's home to the Zagreb Cathedral, founded in 1210. And that's really all I've got. Honestly. By comparison to Zagreb, Sremska Mitrovica, further down the Sava River, is of little modern significance, but was critically important almost two millennia ago. In Roman times, the city, then called Sirmium, was a massive city of upwards of 100,000 citizens. No less than 10 emperors were born there. And it was the basis of operations for Trajan, Marcus Aurelius, and Claudius II for their eastern campaigns. Its prestige was so great, it was called the Glorious Mother of Cities. Indeed, when the Roman Empire was divided into four parts in 293 called the Tetrarchy, Sirmium was one of the empire's four capitals, alongside Mediolanum, or Milan, Augusta Trevororum, Trier, and Nicomedia, which now is mint in Turkey. It later became the capital of the Illyrian province in 379. The last emperor of united Rome, Theodosius, was crowned there in 379. Unfortunately, the glory that was Sirmium was burned to the ground by invading Abars in 582, ending the prominence in the region. It has since bounced between Bulgarian, Byzantine, Hungarian, and Serbian hands, falling to the Ottomans in 1521. Hopefully, the Venetians can restore Sirmium to its former splendor. Geographically speaking, our next stop should be Belgrade and Smederovo. But I want to save that story for last, so onwards we go to Visoko. The Visoko Valley, about 25 kilometers or 15 miles from Sarajevo, is traditionally the heart of the medieval Bosnian kingdom, although its history goes back more than 6,000 years. The first mention of Visoko is in a document signed by Tverto Kotromanic at a Visoki castle in 1355. This castle, built on a hill 210 meters or about 700 feet above the valley floor, looked out over a network of sediments on either side of the Bosnia River, which itself joins the Saba about a third of the way from Sremska Mitrovka to Zagreb. The Stanak, the semi-regular meeting of Bosnian nobles, met in Mil just down the road. At one such meeting in 1377, Tvrtko was elected the first king of the Bosnians. One of the first universities in Europe, founded sometime before 1175, where it appears in Vatican records, was in Mosre, notable for its medicine and theology. However, that theology was linked to the Bosnian Church, which was a splinter group deemed heretical by the Roman Church and possibly linked with the dualistic Bogomils and as such, its records were destroyed once the Bosnian church were reconciled with Rome. The region was conquered by the Ottomans in 1463. The old castle at Visaki was abandoned not long thereafter, though the other settlements remained vibrant. Even though they are two different settlements and provinces, I'm going to deal with both Belgrade and Smidorovo together, as the latter's history is closely linked to the former. The most critical feature of Belgrade for its history is its location. Sitting on a hill, overlooking the south side of the Danube at its confluence with the Sava River, Belgrade is one of the most strategically important sites in all of the Balkans. Whoever controls Belgrade controls access up and down the Danube, 
which connects Ulm, Ingolstadt, Linz, Vienna, Bratislava, Budapest, Belgrade, and cities in Bulgaria, Moldova, Ukraine, and Romania with the Black Sea. It was over control of the Danube that the Ottomans fought a half millennium of war with first the Hungarians and then the Habsburgs. And Belgrade, roughly halfway along the Danube, was the keystone to controlling the river. But the region's importance goes back far beyond the Ottomans or Hungarians. Evidence suggests that there was a human and even Neanderthal presence in the area dating back some 50,000 years to the Neolithic Vinsha culture. Since then, Belgrade has been a place of interest for the Dacians, Celts, Romans, Huns, Avars, Goths, Slavs, Serbs, Byzantines, Bulgars, Franks, Hungarians, Ottomans, and Austrians. When I tell you everybody fought over this place, I mean almost everybody. The first three crusades all passed through the city, though by the time of Barbarossa's third crusade in the late 12th century, the city was mostly destroyed. Throughout its history, Belgrade has been involved in more than 100 wars and was razed to the ground at least 44 times. In the time just before EU4, Belgrade was a major trading center and the heart of the Serbian people. After the first battle of Kosovo in 1389, the Serbian kingdom, a semi-autonomous vassal of Hungary, was wilting under Ottoman pressure. Under the leadership of Stefan Lazarovic, son of the semi-mythical Lazar of Serbia, Belgrade became a refugee haven of sorts for Slavs fleeing Ottoman rule, reaching an estimated population of 50,000 in the early 15th century. However, Stefan's successor, Dured Lazarevic, was forced to return Belgrade to the Hungarians in 1427, and he set about building a new capital at Smederovo, only 40 kilometers or 25 miles downriver from Belgrade. In the space of two years, Dured built a mighty citadel on a defensible hill. The power of the Serbian despotate was failing at this time, however, and the city fell to the Ottomans first in 1439, then given back to Hungary in 1444, only to fall again to the Ottomans temporarily in 1454 and for good in 1459. It would continue to be an important border castle in the Ottoman-Hungarian wars for a further 70 years. After the fall of Constantinople in 1453, the Ottomans pressed onwards, and their goal was Belgrade. Janos Inyadi, who makes his third appearance in this series, led the city's defense in 1456, seeking to prevent Ottoman progress. He was only able to raise a force of 4,000 regulars and some 50,000 untrained and ill-equipped peasants. In July of that year, Mehmed the Conqueror and an army of up to 100,000 men sieged Belgrade. The situation looked so dire, Pope Calixtus III ordered church bells across Christendom to ring at noon to remind Europeans to pray for the success of Hunyadi's troops. And, perhaps miraculously, it worked. After nearly three weeks of siege, the city's peasant defenders grew restless. They began sneaking out of the city at night to attack outlying Ottoman positions, and on the morning of July 22nd, this trickle grew into a deluge. Initially, Hunyadi and his co-commander, John of Capistrano, sought to bring their men back behind the walls, but soon joined the surge forward. Caught off guard, the Ottomans panicked. Sultan Mehmed II personally entered the battle alongside his Janissaries, but took an arrow to the knee. This is where I'm supposed to make a Skyrim reference, but that seems trite. Suffice it to say, Mehmed wasn't nearly as adventurous after that day near Belgrade. After routing the opposition and killing more than 10,000 Ottomans, the Hungarians retreated to the safety of their walls, preparing for the inevitable Ottoman counterattack. But it never came. By the morning, the Ottomans were gone and wouldn't be back for nearly 70 years, eventually taking the city for good in 1521. To this day, however, the Pope has yet to repeal the order to ring the noon bells. And even to this day, bells throughout Christendom repeal at midday, originally in prayer, now in celebration for the stunning victory at Belgrade. Fantastic. Now let's get back to the game. Um, just a heads up, I'd earlier said that I'd uh, recorded 15 episodes of this, but the audio quality on the last several was really, really terrible, and it really started to drop off at around episode 6. So I'm actually going back and I'm redoing all of this. So if you see me start using some of your um, tips and techniques, you know why this is, uh, this is, result is a result of you guys. Now we are a little bit further back than... Uh, that I actually remember. So let's see, what is going on? Who are our alliances? Yeah, the Byzantine rebels are about to are about to uh, trigger in probably Rhodes, I think. Um, yeah, Rhodes is definitely the one that has the greater uh, rebel potential. So which means we need to get we need to get one of our armies there. Oh, it's going to be hard to get our armies there. Especially considering we have to deal with Hungarian noble rebels too, which which sucks. To be perfectly honest, it sucks. 
Um, oh, hey. But they are going to bail them out in the Czech Republic. Uh, uh, bail out Hungary for, for Czechy. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, I thought they were going to take over some of my territories, which I'm really glad they didn't. To be perfectly honest, I'm really glad they didn't. So, um, Vanessa, one of our fleets, we need to separate this out. Boom, protect trade. Oh, it's a galley. <laughs> it's the other ones. Other ones that can protect trade. My bad. Protect trade in... Well, Alexandria is the only one that's going to give us, um... An actual profit so let's let's do that let's definitely do that oh let's also take one of these um i guess we can't separate just yet and <sighs> i'm debating because uh one of you guys i'm sorry i'm going to start forgetting your names i apologize i'm really it, it's strange for an historic for a history guy um i'm really bad with names um but anyways, when you suggested I can just use the Byzantine nobles, Byzantine rebels, to go into uh, Ottoman territory and take things from them. And that would be fantastic. I would love to do this. But I'm fairly certain they're actually going to trigger on roads. Because usually, from my experience, they trigger on the territory that has the highest um, unrest. Which would mean there would be 14,000 rising up in roads. Which, Ororodi as it's called, as Venetian roads would be called. Um, and that's not good for us, because if they're on roads, they don't move anywhere. And if they eventually take this this castle, which I said at the tail end of the last step, uh, in episode four? What episode are we in? In episode five, in the last episode. This was really, really difficult to, to take. Um, it's a really defendable position. Uh, so... So yeah, we I don't want to let this fall into the hands of of uh, Byzantine rebels. But in the meantime, what else are we doing? What else is going on? What is what our oh yeah, we're still a Lord Protector, we're still a, a despot. And what I want to do, yeah, and our overextension is is high. I want to find somebody that will break the back that will help me break the backs of the ottomans and i think the one of the ways that we can do this is poland because poland if i recall correctly yeah has lithuania as their uh junior partner so we can do this um although i do want to continue to uh break through in in hungary and also ragusa we can start taking th some things from them uh Kraj, and who are they allied with Sorry, there's going to be a lot of me going back through, looking through these things. Oh yeah, the the, the Ottomans are still, um, are still guaranteeing them. I'm going to be spending quite a bit of time going back through these things just to double check because, like I said, it's been probably about a week and ten recorded episodes since I was at this this stage. Um, right. Okay, so everything seems to be going pretty well. Everything seems to be going pretty well. We are losing some money. Let's let's try to pay back some of our loans. Um, I don't want to reduce army maintenance because we need them to defend roads against these guys that are going to show up eventually, right? Right? I mean, if, if they didn't happen in roads and they happened somewhere else in, in, in Naxos or, um, what's this other one? Or the Negropont, that would be fine because then they'd go through here, they'd go through here, and then they'd start going here. But then the Ottomans would still just smash them anyways because the Ottomans have a lot... A lot of dudes. Still have very much a lot of dudes. Um, so, where do we expand? That's a good... See, there we go. There's the Rebellion in Rhodes. And we're going to do fine. We are going to do just fine. Excellent. Now, that is done. Who else is next? Albania. Scutari Dorazzo. No, I, I could give them a little bit more autonomy. I don't, I just don't want that to trigger because our manpower is currently sitting at a big, a great big zero, which doesn't do us any good at all. So, I think this episode is just going to be one of those ones where we just kind of uh, sit back, chill, and uh, I mean, this would be a great time for colonizing, 
this would be a great time for certain other things, but uh, certain other things are just not in Venice's future right now. At least not in their immediate future. Um, just because we don't have colonists. We don't have anything to, to do that. We can't deal with, uh, you know, internal Holy Roman Empire stuff because we're still external to that. So, you know, there's, there's, there's options. There just aren't that many good ones. Um... I'm going to make some money. Ooh, embezzlement. Lose five prestige and one Republican tradition because it's becoming more and more clear to you that there aren't that many members of the parliament that you can really trust. In this case, it would be the, the Great Council, the Council of Ten, the Quarantia, things like that. Uh, the Pregadi, the Senate. One of your closest advisors has just been exposed to stealing money from the state treasury. How dare he? Uh, let's get rid of him. I mean, 50% 50 chance of gain of five unrest in Venezia. Or there's probably a good reason for this. I'll lose a little bit of prestige. Eh. At this stage, prestige doesn't really matter. And I'll lose the one Republican tradition that we had left. Which again, eh. Don't really care. We're already a dictatorship. Um, yeah. Hmm. We have a bunch of claims. But again, we're not getting through the Ottomans or... Oh, 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 there's Mamelukian separatists. I completely forgot about them. Okay. Okay, you guys. Um, you're going to chill in Rhodes, actually. You're going to get a little bit more reinforced. And then you're going to head down to take Masa Matra from the Mamelukian Separatists. Oh, I'm also thinking. I want your suggestions for things that we can name our territories after. Um, and I don't just mean... Things like, uh, name them after the doge, or name them after one of your advisors. Yeah, 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 I know that, I know that. But um, one of the colonies, if I ever were to uh, create one, in this case would be called, I think we should call it Serenita, which would be, it's the Venetian for serenity, right? La Serenissima, the most serene republic, same kind of a deal. So I think we should have, um, we should have a, a, something like that. So if you have any suggestions about things to name, like, really creative things to name future colonies, future cities, because, let's be honest, Mersa Matra, not really much there, as you saw in, I believe, episode three. So, I was thinking we could create our own city there, bring a little bit more interactive roleplay into this. So, if you have a suggestion of something that, whoa, 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 okay, this, this is a big moment. But if you have any suggestions about what we can name these places, by all means, let me know. Put a suggestion in the comment box below, right? That's how this works. Black news indeed, because there is a stability drop. Michele, the first Tiepolo, is a terrible, terrible king. 202. Because, <laughs> because I'm not already bad enough with diplomatic power. Um... This sucks. But hey, we are now a feudal monarchy, which means some wonderful things are changing. We can start to marry into dynastic actions, royal marriage into the Byzantines, the, the Eastern Romans, uh, whatever you want to call them. Um, so yeah, there's that. We can also dispute, disputed succession. Maybe we can get Milan. Can we? No, Milan doesn't like us. Um, France, definitely France. They are our allies, after all. Maybe we could, you know, get a nice little, uh, I don't know, maybe we could get a royal marriage with them. We could get a claim they could become a junior partner of ours. That would be amazing. Personal union. Oh, 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 interesting. Currently, we have no heir. So on our monarch's death, there will be a battle for the crown of Venice. Uh, I completely forgot we had the rebellion going on. Uh, Crown of Venice between France and Castile, which is interesting because France would probably win that. Where's, oh, but Aragon, is Aragon part of Castile yet? Yes, Aragon is a junior partner of Castile. So that would be actually an interesting battle. Um, France would probably win that one, but still. But still. And we are getting a looming disaster. Stability is less than one. Well, let's remedy that. There we go. Um, and it's still progressing. Oh, stability is less than one. There we go. Venezia's government is mon- Oh, dear. The Peasants' War is definitely going to trigger. Because, 
Um, our current legitimacy is 13. Progress is gaining two each month. So that means in less than 50 months, in less than five years, this entire thing will go over. Um, okay, the overextension will be will will go down, but our legitimacy legitimacy being higher than 50. Oh boy, oh boy, that's gonna be a while. Um, to be perfectly honest, that's gonna take quite a bit of time, and um, I'm not especially. I don't know what's the word I'm looking for. I'm not especially hopeful that this isn't going to blow up in our faces. Um, estates demand control of provinces. Right. Right. I still have estates. I completely forgot about these things. Um, right. But the burgers, or the, the nobility wants... And what does the nobility thing do? Oh, man. I rarely, rarely play as monarchs. Um, let's give them Athens. Come on, let's give the nobles Athens. There we go, they're no longer upset, but they are, however, quite loyal, which means we can... I was going to say we can demand military support, but we don't have enough. They don't have enough influence. Darn it! Arr. We can send an emissary to the Pope. Gain 10 people influence, but that's just going to disappear quickly because... We lose 0.5 papal influence every year because uh, Venetians first, Christians sec Catholics second. Um, let's repay our loan. There we go. Good. Good. We are making money. We are making money. Our fleet capacity, we're already over capacity in that front. Um, subjects, Eastern Roman Empire are doing well. So, harsh life on the ocean. Many join the ranks of our Navy, expecting a, a more exciting life awaiting them with this opportunity to leave their home behind and see sea and land beyond the Venetian borders. All sea is the Venetian borders. Just pointing that out there. Not all of these are prepared for an often harsh and even more often dull and boring life at sea. Stuck with endlessly repetitive tasks, food and company on longer journeys, many young sailors quickly regret the decision. I can understand that I would not want to be a sailor at all. Dismissed as daydreaming landlubbers by their more seasoned crewmates, they quickly become more trouble than they're worth. Some might eventually grow to become might eventually grow used to the reality of the job and become useful, but others do more good returning home. Recruitment propaganda has its downsides. We lose downsides. Uh, we learn we lose 812 soldiers, uh, sailors, which is unfortunate. It is what it is. Mm, so we need to figure out a way to break the hold of of the Ottomans. Because if we can start taking all of this, we can expand quickly and rapidly. So we need one ally that's good. And I really do think that ally is going to be Poland. But we're currently minus 34 because they're neutral at it, because they have a neutral attitude towards us. So let us let us do it this way. Oh yeah, I still have a lot of communities that I can convert to. Um and a lot of you guys are saying convert to to, to Orthodox. Um yeah, yeah, we could do that. We could definitely do that. But um, but part of me, honestly, I want to try to rebuild the, the Roman Empire and join the Holy Roman Empire as well. Um, and it's a lot more difficult to do that as Orthodox than it is to do that as either Catholic or, or a Reformed or a Protestant, because then as Orthodox, you're heretics to pretty much everybody in the Holy Roman Empire. You will continually be an outsider. Um, and I want to unify the Pentarchy, the, the Rome and Constantinople and Acre and Jerusalem and Alexandria. I want to, I want to unite the Pentarchy um, under the banner of the Holy Roman Empire with the borders of the actual older Roman Empire. Um, so I think staying Catholic, I know it's not the best in terms of gameplay mechanics. I know that. I know that. And Venice had one foot you know, kind of between Catholicism and Orthodoxy anyways. I mean, the Basilica San Marco, the main church in 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 Venice, the, the, the Doge's church, is actually built on the floor plan of, um, of an Eastern Orthodox cross, not the traditional Western cross we see in, in, in like Chartres or Notre Dame or, or even St. Paul's. But anyways, um, Cardinal across the border. Sometimes we have the chance to set something into motion without seeming to have done anything. One such chance has arrived recently, when a cardinal living on the soil of one of our neighbors admitted to an agent from Venezia that he would consider moving across the border and support us in the Curia for a price. 
while this may be tempting, there may be a greater price to pay if we take advantage of this. The wrath of the country he deserts. Um, which country is this? Russia. Um, it's not worth the risk. It's not worth the risk. Yeah, I just, I never accept that. Um, it's just not worth it. The, the, these other countries are up against me. I don't know, Bressa would become the home, because there is no country Bressa. Um, hmm. Whatever. At the end of the day, I don't, I don't accept that anyways. Um, so let us build production in, production in Kosovo. Okay, we already have something in Kosovo, because Kosovo is a gold province, as many of you had pointed out. But let's continue to build production in Venezia. And uh, let's speed up the game a little bit. We don't need to be going at quite a snail's pace. But yeah, I think this episode is just consolidating our, our power base. Not really doing much. I would love, I would love to get Ragusa. I would love to take that. But uh, the Ottomans are just too, too powerful. I think what we're going to have to do is break down Hungary some more. Um, start taking parts of Italy uh, before we can start really trying to go this way. Maybe we could go into Tunis, but Tunis is allied with them anyways. With the Ottomans, that is. So, yeah, what I need is this alliance. I need a royal marriage, or I need, I need to Poland to be on my good side. Serbian separatists have risen up in Kosovo. Uh, yeah, that's my gold territory. I don't want that. I don't... No. No, 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 no. 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 Uh-uh. So, uh, we're gonna push these guys out, but hopefully they will leave of their own volition, because I, quite frankly, don't want to go take my 10,000 against their 17,000. That doesn't seem like a fun day for anybody involved, unless you're a part of the 17,000, in which case, bully for you. But, Chucky... Every time I say Chucky, I think the doll from Child's Play. Chucky. I don't know. The bronze cannon has made its entrance onto the battlefield and it is here to stay. The materials needed to feed the growing cannon-making industries have led to an explosion in the demand for copper over the last few years, and prices have risen as a result. Boom! Price of copper changes by 50% uh, higher. And Cyprus should really be a source of copper. That's actually where we get the name Cyprus from. But, uh from copper, but it's not actually in this game. So, eh, it is what it is. It is what it is. So, yeah, once our truce with Hungary is up, which is 1485, which is another decade from now, uh, we should do pretty well and just start smashing Hungary and taking a lot of stuff from them. Bishoki is, oh, it's, wow, they're definitely going to rise up. So, um, Okay, you know what, I should probably get both of my armies up here. Uh, just because these guys are going to be getting back into Kosovo a little bit later. Oh, dears, oh, dears, oh, dears, oh, dears. That's not what I wanted to do. 21st September. Will they get out? They cannot leave. Oh, darn. That was a mistake. That was a big, big mistake. Um, oh, dears. Okay, so... We retreat, and we do something like this. Okay, we've gained a core province. All the guys we took from Hungary are now core provinces of ours, which is fantastic. But we also only have 13,000, 14,6. Um, I'm just going to wait. I mean, we don't need to wait too long, simply because we don't have any manpower left over. So... So yeah, um, but what we can do to increase that is we can get Croatia and Serbia. There we go, Croatia, boom, and Serbia. Nope, that's Bosnia, Croatia, Serbia. There we go. We'll join Italy. Well, not Italy yet. We're not Italy. We are Venice still. Um, we'll join us as states. Northern Greece, Cyrenaica, and Bosnia can wait just a little bit. There we go. Let's, let's get Kosovo back to the good guys. And, of course, there's the rebellion in Vishoki. Okay. Um, right. So, 
Serbian separatists in Montenegro. Hopefully they will come back through Kosovo. Because I don't want to have to go down and attack them. Um, right, I'm actually losing men a little bit each month. So let's go down and attack them. Actually, let's get the king. Let's get Michele Tiepolo down in there. Oh, this isn't good. This isn't good. I mean, yeah, we smashed them. We won. But we also have very, very little men left. Not that we have, like, tiny, tiny men are the only ones that are left, but we have few men. Few men left. And that's... That's, uh, that's unfortunate. But what we can do... Let's fabricate some claims on Hungary. Let's get... Uh, I think we already we already have a claim on that. So let's get Varazd. Let's get Somogi. Let's get Seged. Oh, we, we don't have uh, enough spy power. We can, however. Let's get this. Fabricate claims in Bosna. Boom. Boom. All right. Oh, Marco. Marco is the new heir. Hey, that's actually pretty good. 141. That's, okay, it's not great. <laughs> but it's a lot better than... Um, than 202. Like, <laughs> pretty much the guy we start off with is the exact reason why you don't want a long-term leader. Because if they suck, if they're terrible, if they're an idiot, and there's no way to remove them, you're, you're, you're stuck with them, right? Yeah. Scholars have discovered ancient documents tracing the heritage of our noble dynasty back to Julius Caesar himself. This must be used to our advantage. And many of you guys might know this, but um, Caesar is actually where we get the word for a Tsar and, and Kaiser. So um, so the Tsars tried to trace their lineage back to, back to Julius Caesar. The Kaisers, through the Holy Roman Empire, tried to trace their lineage, at least not their direct personal lineage, but the, the, the lineage of their position back to, um, back to Julius Caesar. And I'm sure there are other countries that do that as well, but those are the only two that I can think of off the top of my head. Glory for Tiepolo. Used to strengthen the throne with five legitimacy or ten prestige. Let's get five legitimacy. Because we need we need more of that. Because there is a looming disaster, but it's already at 58%. There will be a peasant's war. That I can pretty much guarantee. And we have no manpower with which to fight said peasant's war. So, what we need... We need legitimacy. Desperately. And there's no real quick way to do that. Um, and that's, that's really super duper unfortunate for us. Because national unrest will go up by 5, which sucks. Instability cost modifier will go up by 50%. Um... Ludwig of Hesse is the new emperor. Good, good for Ludwig. Good for Ludwig, the Hessian. Yeah. So, taxation, no, it's going to give us the most money. Oh, huh. Treviso, right. General Michele Ruzzini would no longer serve us. Okay. Okay, but actually, let's drop money down again. Oh, oh, no, no, no. There's a rebel uprising. There's going to be a rebel uprising in Serbia. Srem Belgrad. Oh, let's get... We don't, want, we don't want a rebel uprising in Kosovo, so let's slide these guys over there. Kosovo just loves to rebel. Actually, no, no, the previous um, Serbian rebels actually came to us from the Ottomans, so they didn't rebel through us, uh, which is unfortunate. Because otherwise Kosovo wouldn't be rebelling. Actually, how many people is this going to be? 19,000. <sighs> in France, my faithful ally, Bon, is requesting that we come to their aid in the French conquest of Chahal against uh, Burgundy and Flanders. Okay, maybe I'll get some, I'll build up some uh, favors with, with the French. At least that's the plan. I don't know if that's actually going to happen. And I wanted to do this for a while now, but let's get this out. Protect trade in. Highest profit to be made will be in Alexandria. Which is definitely a goal of, of, of our conquest, is Alexandria. Um, 
just for the sake of of trade and and being the springboard to India and in, in the East. And our king is already dead. What? How? Oh, we have 14 years? Oh. Um, this is going to be a very boring next couple of episodes. I'm sorry. So, uh, let's put it this way. Uh, okay, at least we've maintained, we've uh, increased relations with Poland. Hopefully we can turn this into a royal marriage alliance kind of a situation. Good. Actually, what is our... Okay, we currently have enough um, vassals and whatever. Uh, diplomatic relations, so we should be fine on this front. But let's just get Poland into an alliance, which will help us if the Ottomans ever decide to try something fishy. If we're allied with basically Spain, even though it's currently three separate crowns. Spain and Poland and and France. This should be pretty pretty good for us. And uh, that's about time for this episode. I know not much happened, and I'm kind of rambling, but thank you very much for watching. If you like what you see, and I know you do, please like, please subscribe, give me a thumbs up, and I'm just saying this out there. The only reason most of you guys are even here watching this was because one of my awesome subs one of my awesome viewers, a guy that really likes this, decided to share this with the world via Reddit. And that's amazing. I owe like a thousand subs in less than a week to this guy. Um, I always say that the artist makes the art, but the curator makes the artist. And so this guy is my curator for now. Uh, so thank you very much for sharing. If you like this, also share it with the world. Put it out on Twitter. Put it out on, on everything. But now I'm just rambling and my throat hurts. Have a fantastic day, and I'll see you all next time in the most serene kingdom. Ciao, everybody.